OK, we start this afternoon with last night's shocking scenes in Turkey and the, a club president who punched the top referee has been arrested. The Ankara Gucu president, Farouk Kocha, hit referee Halil Umut Mela at the end of the game against Riza Spor. It sparked a brawl between both teams and staff members, which saw Mela being kicked whilst he was on the ground. He was subsequently taken to hospital for treatment. Well, Kocha entered the pitch at full time after his side had conceded a 97th minute equaliser and then struck Mello, as you can see. The referee eventually made it into the changing rooms with the help of police. The Football Federation branded the attack inhumane and announced the suspension of all games in all leagues indefinitely. They added that Kocha, his club, Ankara Gucu, and all those guilty of the attack would be punished in the strongest terms possible. Well, Mello, who is 37, has been a FIFA standard referee since 2017, took charge of Celtic's game with Lazio last month. There's been lots of reaction to this, as you would expect. And the uh, FIFA president, Gianni Infantino, has said there is absolutely no place for violence in football on or off the field. Events following the match are totally unacceptable and have no place in our sport or society. Without match officials, there is no football. Referees, players, fans and staff have to be safe and secure to enjoy the game. And I call on the relevant authorities to ensure that this is strictly implemented and respected at all levels. Well, the president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has condemned the scenes. Meanwhile, the president of the Turkish Football Federation, Mehmet Boyakeksi, who suspended all of the country's football leagues following the attack, called the incident shameful. FIFA kokartlı hakemimiz Halil Umut Meler çok kötü ve insanlık dışı bir saldırıya uğramıştır. Bu saldırıyı şiddetle kınıyoruz. Bu yapılan saldırı Türk futbolu adına maalesef çok şanssız ve utanç gecesi. Türk futbolunun bunları hak etmediğini düşünüyoruz ve artık yeter diyoruz. Yeter. Bu insanlık dışı saldırının sorumlularının ve azmettiricilerinin hakkında devletimizle eş güdümlü olarak hak ettikleri tüm cezai işlemler uygulamaya başlamıştır. Türkiye Futbol Federasyonu olarak acil bu saate kadar toplantımızı gerçekleştirdik ve tüm liderdeki maçları süresiz olarak erteledik. Hakemimizin sağlığı her şeyden Sağ önemli. Başkanım. Çünkü Sen bir bir, ça bir bir çatlak var şu anda e, kemiğinde. İnşallah e, daha büyük bir sıkıntı yoktur. Öncelikle bizim hakemimizin sağlık durumu çok önemli. Bu konuları daha sonra şimdi olay çok sıcak. Well, Pierre Luigi Kalina currently chairs the FIFA Referees Committee. At a recent IFAB meeting in London, Kalina said he believes that current levels of abuse directed at referees is a, quote, cancer of the game. It's a problem affecting uh, football everywhere in the world. Uh, and, uh, and I repeat, I'm very grateful to the board of directors of IFAB to have put their focus on this because something has to be done. Otherwise, uh, uh, he said during the morning, this morning session, this might be the cancer who will kill football. Because it's something unacceptable. Well, Kevin Campbell played in Turkey for Trabzon Sport in the late 1990s. He joined the football show earlier on and described the attack on the referee as disgusting. To assault the referee like that, and uh, I, I thought was just was, was disgusting. And I, I think the football authorities and the, the obviously law from outside is going to come into it because it's actual, he's actually hit the, the referee and as you said he's got a fracture so I think he's going he's gonna to get the, a ton of bricks for, um, chucked on him because that should not happen on a football pitch at all Rob, it's, it's so poor. Well, European football expert Kevin Hatchard, as you can see there, joins us now just to get more on this story. Kevin, thanks very much for, for coming on. Um, just first up, your reaction to, to seeing those scenes last night in Turkey? Yeah, deeply shocking, Adam, because, you know, we've seen criticism of referees. We've seen, you know, attacks on referees verbally. To see a club president 
go onto the field of play and punch a referee is beyond belief, really. And I think what you're going to see now is a very, very strong reaction, not only in terms of the, uh, you know, the authorities' reaction more generally at government level, but I think you're going to see a very, very strong reaction in terms of the football authorities as well, because you've got to bear in mind Turkey is supposed to be co-hosting Euro 2032 with Italy. They have to be seen to be clamping down on this. They have to be seen to be doing something very, very strong here. So we don't know what the punishment's going to be uh, for for Koja, but we also don't know what the punishment's going to be for Ankara Guju. And I imagine it's going to be a very, very strong one. Well, the the president, um, Farouk Koca, he has been arrested now, so we will wait to see what what happens with that. Twice elected to Turkey's parliament as part of uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's ruling AK party. Um, I I guess there there will be action from, from all quarters. Absolutely. Uh, And uh, there's already been a suggestion that uh, there's a process underway to potentially remove him from the party. As you say, he's been part of parliament and that makes it even more extraordinary. And I think what's really interesting is that the Turkish Football Federation have already suggested this is part of a wider malaise because the discourse around refereeing in Turkey and beyond is a pretty toxic one. And there's a feeling that a lot of club presidents and a lot of clubs in general cover failures by stoking up this suggestion that referees are perhaps, you know, corrupt or substandard or what have you. And I think it's interesting that already they're saying that has to change as much as we have to clamp down on this specific incident. And one would hope if there's any good to come out of this, which is a a horrendous incident, you would hope that that discourse around refereeing becomes a bit more, a bit less toxic over time. Yeah, and to to see the you know the the head of the the football association, the president, the, the FIFA president speaking about it, you would hope this is a, a a wake up call for Turkish football. But it is only damaging, isn't it? It's massively damaging uh, for Turkish football's reputation. Um, you know, you you look at what's happening tonight, for example. There could be a very good news story around Turkish football if Galatasaray can make it to the last 16 of the Champions League. And you look at the stylish football they've been playing. But this is, you know, a horrendous incident. And it does have to be dealt with, I think, in a way that shows football in general that Turkish football has its act together. And Turkey's not alone in that. Absolutely. We've seen incidents in Greece, incidents in France. We've seen incidents all over the continent and beyond. We saw what happened in Brazil with the reaction to Santos being relegated, for example. So that it's it's very complex because these are football problems, but they're also societal problems as well. And the authorities somehow have to find a way of getting a, a grip on these. Yeah, you've been speaking about it on social media. I was just checking your, your feed. Um, and it's very difficult to, to grapple with that. How do, you, how do you counter some of those things that you've mentioned there, you know, being a societal problem, but so- football is part of society? Absolutely. And I think you can only take it step by step. I think if you look at the refereeing, for example, I think we can probably help as media because I think sometimes... You know, we can look too much at what referees get wrong rather than what they get right. I understand the frustrations about VAR, for example. I share some of those. I do think that VAR has been poorly handled in some ways. But I think what it's done, that discourse around VAR, is it's probably masked the fact that A, refereeing is a very, very difficult job. But also, referees do get a lot right. If you look at the numbers, if you look at the data, they get the vast, vast majority of decisions correct. So I think that is difficult, you know, to turn away from. But I think we do need to be more measured in our discussions of refereeing. And in terms of the wider picture, it's so difficult because you look, for example, in France, what happened recently in the game, well, even before the game between Marseille and Lyon, when the Lyon coach was attacked and Fabio Grosso was injured, we saw those pictures of him with blood all over his face. That was before the team coach even got to the ground. So that's obviously a police issue uh, and that's obviously a societal issue as well. So it's a big, big problem. It's very, very complex, but I do think we can start tackling it piece by piece and it needs a lot of disparate groups, I think, to get together and start coming up with solutions. Yeah, and this incident will certainly bring it uh, sharply into focus.